A vote was initially planned for Wednesday on a draft resolution that did not mention Omar by name but condemned anti-Semitism. But the vote was delayed after pushback from members, including the Congressional Black Caucus and Congressional Progressive Caucus, who wanted the resolution to condemn all forms of bigotry. They got their wish, as House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said Thursday morning that resolution would condemn anti-Semitism, Islamophobia and white supremacy while not naming Omar specifically. The revised resolution is longer than the draft that was circulated earlier this week and includes a long list of anti-Muslim hate crimes and additional acts of white supremacy. The resolution passed early Thursday evening, with all Democrats voting yes and 23 Republicans voting no over complaints that the bill was too broad. Rep. Steve King, R. Iowa, voted present. I thought the resolution should enlarge the issue to anti-Semitism, anti-Islamophobia, anti-white supremacy, and that it should not mention her name, and that's what we're working on, said Pelosi. Something that is one resolution addressing these forms of hatred not mentioning her name because it's not about her, it's about these forms of hatred. Rep. Liz Cheney, the third-ranking Republican in the House, denounced the measure. Today's resolution vote was a sham put forward by Democrats to avoid condemning one of their own and denouncing vile anti-Semitism, Cheney said in a statement following her no vote. We need to have an equity in our outrage. Presley, who is a member of both the Black Caucus and Progressive Caucus, said Wednesday. Islamophobia needs to be included in this. We need to denounce all forms of hate. There is not hierarchy of hurt. Rep. Omar's strength inspires me and so many, wrote Flaib, the other Muslim woman in Congress, on Twitter Sunday. She is being targeted just like many civil rights icons before us who spoke out about oppressive policies. As she uplifts my sighty referring to her grandmother and other Palestinians in the name of justice and peace, she shows us real courage. Late Wednesday afternoon, a number of Democratic presidential hopefuls in the Senate spoke out in support of Omar while condemning bigotry. Anti-Semitism is a hateful and dangerous ideology which must be vigorously opposed in the United States and around the world, said Senator Bernie Sanders, I Vermont, who is Jewish, in a statement. We must not, however, equate anti-Semitism with legitimate criticism of the right-wing, Netanyahu government in Israel. Rather, we must develop an even-handed Middle East policy which brings Israelis and Palestinians together for a lasting peace. What I fear is going on in the House now is an effort to target Congresswoman Omar as a way of stifling that debate. That's wrong. Senator Kamala Harris, D. California, said she was concerned focusing on Omar could put her in danger but added that you can both support Israel and be loyal to our country. I also believe there is a difference between criticism of policy or political leaders and anti-Semitism. Senator Elizabeth Warren, D. Mass said, branding criticism of Israel as automatically anti-Semitic has a chilling effect on our public discourse and makes it harder to achieve a peaceful solution between Israelis and Palestinians. Threats of violence like those made against Rep. Omar are never acceptable. Omar also received grassroots support, including from If Not Now, an organization of young, progressive Jewish Americans who support ending Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. Omar's backers note she did not mention Jews specifically. Historically, Jews, who until 1948 were a religious minority in every country where they lived, have been suspected of disloyalty, and the victims of persecution as a result. Jewish Americans have traditionally been strong supporters of Israel, although today evangelical Christians are much more vocal in their backing. Many progressive Jewish groups have denounced the treatment of Palestinians by the government of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Republicans have attempted to use the resolution as a wedge issue, as President Trump has repeatedly called for Omar to be stripped of her position on the House Foreign Affairs Committee and to resign completely from Congress. It is shameful that House Democrats won't take a stronger stand against anti-Semitism in their conference, said Trump whose anti-refugee rhetoric was seen as partial inspiration for a gunman who killed 11 people at a Pittsburgh synagogue last October.
anti-Semitism has fueled atrocities throughout history, and it's inconceivable they will not act to condemn it. It is unclear if Omar will face any further reprimand for her comments. Rep. Elliot Engel, DNY, was one of the members pushing for the resolution, but he said Tuesday he would not remove the freshman congresswoman from her position on the Foreign Affairs Committee, which he chairs.